Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. It is first day, the 26th of August. We're just five days out now from closure of the transfer window. I just want to say as well, my apologies for the few days when you haven't had the daily leads. If I'm being honest with you, I've needed to rest up, recuperate. Um, I was getting frustrated as well with the lack of news from a Leeds United front when it came to transfers, like it's my football club. You know what I mean? So naturally it hits. I was like, yo, we're really not doing anything here, man. And it was a little bit frustrating, I can't lie. But listen, we're back on it, right? We've got loads to go through today and I promise I'll be as consistent as I was previously. I just needed a couple of days, man. You know, peaks and troughs, you go up, you go down. It is what it is, you know, without delving too much into it, you get what I'm saying. Um, but look, yeah, so we've got the daily leads tonight as well at 8 o'clock. Of course, you've got uh, Before the Whistle Blows, uh, game week three, my favourite time of the week. I love doing that show. And on Friday as well, um, I'll be doing another preview with my main man, Conor McGilligan, from, of course, one lead. So make sure you look out for that, because as I say, I know loads of you. Absolutely loved that one there last week for the Everton game. So we'll be doing it again. Um, so as always, subscribe to the channel, like the video, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell because we've got loads of watch alongs this weekend as well on the Just Joe Football Show. But that's enough rambling from me now. Let's get into today's video. And this is the moment when I take a stand of God. So, guys, before we get to the latest transfer updates, I just want to start with crew. Um, obviously, I didn't go to the game. I thought, do you know what? It's skin os midintos, tired, go down there, won't get back till midnight, it's midweek, it'll be largely under 23s, which it weren't. Um, I'll be able to get a stream, which I couldn't. Um, <laughs> and then it was a sellout, and the game was 3-0, and I'm like, yo, I'm never doing that again. I remember going down to see us play Blackburn after we'd played them up when we were due to play them on the weekend, and there were 7,500 people there, and I still went down, and we were rubbish. So I don't know why I made that decision. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'm turning into that like Premier League like snob. Like I don't need to worry about crew, man. We've got Liverpool coming up. Don't worry about that. What a mistake that was. It won't be happening again anyway. I put it that way. Um, <laughs> tired or not, I'll be there. Um, but I just wanted to go through some things that we learned, obviously, from that Crew Alexander fixture through to the next round. Very uh, strong lineup from Bielsa. Clearly taking the the competition seriously this time around. Adam Forshaw played 60 minutes. Does that beg to the question that do we even need a centre midfielder? I genuinely felt Louis O'Brien would already be in the door. It's gone quiet on him. Uh, we know we've been linked with Josh Brownell, who we'll be facing at the weekend with Burnley. Again, it's gone quiet on him. So maybe Leeds United are thinking, listen, if Forshaw continues in this vein, we don't need anyone. And the fact that he played 60 minutes competitive football, um, I think I was hearing on All Stats, aren't we, that Bielsa had said... He wants him to play two games in a week before he, he gets him ready for the first team. So the under-23s play today, I think, maybe, or maybe Friday. If he plays in that, then he'll be ready to feature. He'll be ready to feature, which is a massive plus because Bielsa's a massive fan of Forshaw. I'm a big fan of Forshaw, and I think he'd be ideal, um, you know, as a squad player and someone we could look to 100%. It was great to see Lorente. Um, he makes his first appearance of the season after picking up a knock uh, in pre-season. Big for him. It was quite telling for me that Strauch and Lorente was the partnership. Is it the start of the phasing out of Cooper? Of course, you know, I'm a massive advocate of him. I think maybe sometimes I over go with the praise for Cooper because I know how much disdain he gets from certain sections of the fan base. We all have our favourites. It is what it is. But could we be about to see the phasing out of Liam Cooper and maybe Lorente and Strout being our preferred partnership long term? I guess we'll see at the weekend. Um, it was amazing to see uh, Calvin Phillips get the captaincy. Uh, I'd even like to say if indeed it was the phasing out of Liam Cooper, I would like to see Calvin Phillips made captain straight away. I love Bill Ailey. But I just love the idea of homegrown Calvin Phillips, England stalwart, being the captain of this side. It would just be amazing. I love Billy. You know, I'm annoyed to see the vice captain, as it were, and it's chosen by the players. But for me, Calvin captain all day long. Uh, and Jack Harrison. Jack Harrison finally showed up. Not that he's been poor as such, but um, he was amazing against Crew. 92% uh, pass accuracy for the whole game. Created seven chances. Had five accurate crosses, four accurate long balls, created two big chances. And he also got, obviously, two goals and an assist. You know, um, he was on fire yesterday, deservedly got man of the match. 
Um, and and what a player, what what a player we have on our hands for just eleven million pound. And I'm expecting him to be heavily involved against Burnley. You know, he ticked over nicely against Crew, and I think look, we'll we'll dominate a little bit more than we've seen in the previous games against Burnley at the weekend for me personally. So, and I do think Leeds United will win the game, and we'll discuss it in more detail tomorrow with Connor. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm I'm expecting Jack Harrison to be heavily involved at the weekend. Um, We'll move on to the other side of the wing now, just to come away from crew. But let's just talk about Rafinha. Obviously, we know that he got his Brazil call up recently. Um, it's actually come out that he's the most productive Brazilian player across UEFA's top five leagues uh, for 2021. 20, uh, up there with some massive names, of course, uh, Gabriel Jesus, Neymar, uh, Firmino, um, you know, players from uh, Cagliari in France. Uh, of course, Mateus Pereira, who a lot of us would have liked to have seen at Ellen Road, but he's gone to Saudi Arabia. But uh, yeah, Rafinha, you can see why a lot of teams wanted him, why Brazil have finally given that call up. But it turns out he's not probably going to be able to go um, because the Premier League and the government have decided um, that players that are due to represent their na national sides that are in the red zone, red list of countries, um, that they won't be able to go play. So selfishly, I'm like, that's good. <laughs> I know that's, I know that's bad. But look, if if Rafinha goes, which okay, I want him to go as well, of course. But he'll miss the Liverpool game. Admittedly, Liverpool will miss Fabinho, Allison, and Firmino for our fixture. But they have a bigger squad than us, and I just don't like the idea of Costa playing at right wing instead of Rafinha against Liverpool. Um, but look, Bielsa wants him to get his call up. He hopes it, 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 it gets sorted out. Of course, Rafinha will want to as well. But from a selfish standpoint, I'm like, right, if he can't go, then he can't go. He does also mean Helder Costa as well can't be called up to the Angolan national side for their internationals in September. So he's also affected by it. And the government have come out and yesterday and said they have no plans whatsoever to change the policy on arrivals from red list countries. Um, so it looks like they won't be playing in their World Cup qualifying matches in those areas. Uh, it's really mad, isn't it? It's having such a such an effect. Um, and I, I can imagine Rafinha will be disappointed, but like I say, it looks like he'll be staying in Yorkshire for the next round of international fixtures. Um, we're now just going to move on to some transfers. Um, Skybet, just looking, Leeds United Live did an article and looked at the, the best odds for Leeds United to secure signatures before the window. Um, there's a few wild names in there, some that we've been linked. So Josh Brownhill is at 74. Dan James still continues to be linked to 8-1. to one. I know Marcus Rashford's been pictured in training at Manchester United after his shoulder surgery. Maybe that could be a move. We'll have to watch this space. Mikel Damsgaard at 12-1. to one. Again, I expect him to, to rock up at Spurs. I don't know why. And Divock Origi. I've been asked this as well by... Um, by the Snap Media team and do some articles for them that you might have seen online. And they've, you know, put forward Divock Origi to me in the past. And I just don't see that as being a move. And the fact that we're 12 to 1 seems a bit of a wild one. I can't see us moving for Divock Origi or a striker. Um, however, however, uh, Team Talk yesterday were, were informed that Leeds are looking at the possibility of signing Daryl Dyke on loan from Orlando City before the window closes. Um, we've seen in the crew game and, and throughout the season and last season that Rodrigo and Tyler Roberts haven't really worked in that central striking role. Um, Bielsa prefers to adopt them as, as a 10, as a midfielder, as it were. Um, and maybe we'll look to go for another striker to, to be a substitute for a Bamford. Um, and sources close to Leeds are suggesting that a loan deal could be possible, um, which is where Dyke you know, comes into the situation. He, he may be available on loan from the MLS side, Orlando City, of course. That would feed into the American co-owners 49ers and what they could do over there in, in terms of raising the profile of Leeds United out there as well. Um, he spent the second half of last season on loan at Championship Barnsley. Uh, he performed very well, got nine goals in 19 games. Um, I do believe, though, that the Barnsley coach, who is now at West Brom and they've had an amazing start to the season, Alex Mowat's ripping it up. Apparently, he's also in for him as well. But if, if Leeds United are genuine and are going to join the race for, for Dyke, you know, for Daryl Dyke, you would imagine that we win that race. Um, it seems mad. Look, we're 12-1 to 1 for Divock Origi. I don't think we're even in the hunt for a striker. 
But reports are saying elsewhere that Leeds United might be looking at a loan for a Daryl Dyke. Uh, Stephen Gerrard's been speaking and uh, apparently he's fearful that Leeds United could return to sign or at least make an offer for Rangers forward Ryan Kent before the end of the trans, uh, transfer window. Um, however, we know now that a lot of, uh, including Stephen Gerrard and Ryan Kent and certain sections of the Rangers team are having now to self-isolate uh, due to close contacts with people that have COVID. I believe Stephen Gerrard's even going to miss their Europa League qualifier tie. So that might scupper any deal. You know, we, we know that Rafinha can't go on international duty. I can't imagine Leeds United are going to be looking to sign a player that's that's self-isolated. It's going to make it difficult to do negotiations and stuff as well. Um, but like I say, Ryan Kent's the one that just won't go away. Like Dan James, I think they'll forever be linked to Leeds United until they move to another club. You know, it's like when we were always linked to Becchio, we were always linked to Max Gradle, you know, their next move. Until they make that next move, they will always be linked to Leeds. Um, Adama Traore, apparently Leeds are unwilling to pay Wolves' asking price for Adama Traore. It looks like he could be set for Spurs. Um, apparently Leeds are 10 million short of their rival's valuation of the wide man. I believe it's BS. I, I don't think we're ever in for a Dama Traore, but it's been reported that we're 10 million shy. And do you know what? I'm glad because I don't rate him at all. He's uh, all mouth, no action, if that makes sense. Um, there's just nothing there. Like he gets into dangerous positions and he just fluffs his lines. I used to say him and St. Maximan are the same, but I think Maximan's a, a step above. Traore is just Hadi Sacco on steroids oiling up them guns like a big man. Um, one player that is at Leeds United that is wanted uh, over in Holland, guys, is Cody Drama. He's wanted by Dutch club Camber. Uh, I believe it's pronounced. Um, we know he's well thought of at Leeds United. He's not going to be leaving on a permanent deal, that's for sure, but maybe they're looking at a loan. But as I say, I don't see Cody Drama leaving Leeds United because if indeed Aileen was injured, I know we've got Shackleton, Dallas, etc. But Cody Drama, we're not Angus Kinnear. Angus Kinnear has come out and said in programme notes ahead of the Everton game that he sees Drama, Somerville, Greenwood, Gelder and Lewis Bay all having first team impact this season. You know, and that's surely come from Bielsa. Maybe that's why Bielsa is saying and they're agreeing that actually I think we're all right. We'll be all right. If we have injuries, we have X, Y, Z. So I can't see Cody Drama going anywhere at all, ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he he definitely makes his way into the first team, maybe in a couple of seasons' time. He is the man to take over the Luke Ailey mantle. Um, and I think when players go out on loan, it's not always a good thing. And I know a lot of you will say, well, what about Perveda? But I still think, I'm still not sure on Perveda genuinely, even though he's gone out on loan and maybe they're expecting a similar impact to what Harvey Elliott had and now he's in the Liverpool first team. But I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure on, on Perveda returning to Leeds United, if I'm honest. Uh, and just to finish, guys, we have the news that Ilian Melier is due to be named France's under-21s first choice goalkeeper during the upcoming international break. We know he's got Hugo Lloris's uh, number one spot for the first team in his sights. Um, but previous uh, number one, Alban Lafont, he's now too old to represent the under-21s. And Etienne Green... Um, which is Melier's closest competitor, has actually chosen to represent England. Um, so, free run at it. Melier will be France's uh, under-21s uh, first-choice keeper in prep for when he gets the number one spot from Larice, of course. But listen, that was your Daily Leads. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. It's a pleasure doing this. Sorry for the last few days, as I say, but we're back bigger than ever. Look out for Before the Whistle Blows tonight at 8pm. And, of course, look out tomorrow, Connor. Myself and Connor from One Leeds will be previewing the Burnley game. Uh, and I'll have plenty of watch-alongs on the weekend. We've got some fantastic games to look forward to. Arsenal, City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Leeds, Burnley. And then there's also an evening kickoff. I can't remember what it is right now. But I'm going to leave it there. Peace out now. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds!